The year is 1904. A young J.R.R. Tolkien, recently orphaned, discovers a book of epic poetry called The Kalabali in the library of King Edward's school in Birmingham. Though the compilation of Finnish epic poems, daring quests, folk tales, and more has been translated from a language the young boy had never heard of before, he finds comfort in the characters and in its form. But his time at King Edward's school is dominated by studies of the classics and of history, and the young scholar has no time to study Finnish until he attends Oxford University years later. While at university, Tolkien consistently stopped by the school libraries to borrow Finnish grammar books, hoping to one day become fluent and read his favorite childhood folktales from the Kalabala in full. Years later, he would admit to poet W. H. Auden that, and quote, he never learned Finnish well enough to do more than plod through the original Kalabala, end quote. But the passion for language and the deep interest in Finnish mythology was there, and so became the roots for many aspects of Tolkien's works that we know and love today. The Kalevala, aside from being a great source of intrigue for Tolkien, is a book of Finnish poetry compiled by Dr. Elias Lonrot during the mid-19th century. The Kalevala was Lonrot's second edition of a collection of Finnish cantos such as folk songs, traditional wedding songs, and rural spells. These snippets of poetry, song, and story were composed in story cycles, much like Tolkien's Silmarillion. The first cycle details the creation of the Earth, which, unlike Tolkien's world, is caused by a duck egg breaking into shards which compose the sky, ground, etc. Other cycles detail the lives of the deities, and some detail tragic stories of men long ago. And while the cycles found in the Kalevala were not new by any definition, the collection, publication, and diffusion of the book was impactful to the Finnish people and their mythology. Tolkien, like many others, was captivated by the whimsical and often tragic nature of the stories presented in the Kalevala. One component he found particularly fascinating was the poems that involved the tragic hero Kalervo. In fact, Tolkien's earliest known short story is called The Story of Kalervo. In this piece, Tolkien took the character from the Finnish myth and rewrote his story as it is found in the Kalevala as a tale with poetry laced in, instead of rewriting it as an epic poem. This short story gave the reader an early look at the beginnings of Tolkien's style and eventual legendarium. He later rewrote the story of Kalervo into a book called The Book of Lost Tales, and changed Kalervo's name to Turin Turnbar. We see the story of Turin Turnbar in the Silmarillion, and it was later independently published as The Children of Hurin. Like Kalervo in the Kalevala, Turin is plagued with ill fortune and commits horrendous acts unknowingly the worst of which is seducing his sister, resulting in her subsequent suicide. He also causes the ruin of his family, murders his best friend, and ultimately kills himself in grief. In addition to rewriting a major character from the collection of Finnish folktales, we see influences of the Kalevala in Tolkien's style of writing. Specifically, the reader sees the use of poetry throughout his stories, syntactic similarities, and the use of independent events that have no importance to the rest of the story other than to introduce new elements. For example, the scene in The Hobbit with the trolls is made to introduce the elvish swords, but the trolls do not have much importance elsewhere in the story. In the Kalevala, poem 31, the poem begins with an explanation of how Kalervo's father came to be. This character serves the purpose of how Calervo came into existence, but does not play a role outside of his own death setting up Calervo's eventual misfortune. Tolkien's use of the Kalabala is a fine demonstration of how the author often borrowed from other myths to create his own legendarium. The use of an already existing mythology not only adds an element of novelty and familiarity, but also supports Tolkien's idea that mythopoeia should be a soup where the best parts of different stories are taken and added together in order to continue improving on their various flaws and weaknesses. 
In addition, Tolkien's syntactic style parallels the Kalevala in regards to large sentence structure and the use of descriptive language. The Kalevala also set the precedent for Tolkien to riddle his stories with both poem and song, adding a richness to his world unseen in the works of many other fantasy authors and contributing to his own world-building efforts. Another aspect of sub-creation Tolkien took from the Kalevala was the Finnish language itself. By the time Tolkien finally managed to teach himself some of the notoriously difficult Nordic language, the esteemed linguist was already familiar with Latin, Greek, Welsh, and Old English. And yet something about the Finnish language captivated Tolkien's interests and even inspired the Elvish language that he would later call Quenya. From Finnish, Tolkien adopted a very basic sound system complex verb endings, and grammar rules. He also ensured that both were agglutinative languages, meaning that both languages create complex words by stringing together smaller morphemes. Quenya uses the same long vowels, umlaut accents, and aspirated unvoiced stops as Finnish as well. It is easy to hear the similarities when the two are listened to side by side. For comparison, here is a recording of a Finnish YouTuber reciting a poem from the Kalevala followed by a recording of Tolkien reciting his poem Namarie in Quenya. Lauloi vanha Väinämöinen, järvet läikkyi maa järisi, vuoret paskiset papisi, paaet vahvat paukahteli, kalliot kaheksi lensi, kivet rannoilla rakoili. Lauloi nuoren joukahaisen, vesat lauloi vempelehen, Paju pehkon länkilöihin, rajat rankehen enähän, lauloi korjaan kultaajan, lauloi lampihin hajoiksi, lauloi ruoskan helmiletkun meren ranta ruokosiksi. Ai lauri elantar lassi surine, in jaru nutti narvi raamar alloron, in jarvi linti julmar vanier miorum mardelissi miru voriva, Andun ne pella vardo telma nu luini jassen tintelari elini, o Mario ai ritari lirinen. Si mani yulda minnen quantula, an si den talle varda o io lossio ve fania maria delentari ortene, arigli ti arundulave lumbole a sindano riello caita morni e falma linna rimbe metta hissie, un truppa cala chiglio miri oiele. Si vanno na Roma lo vanno a Valimar, na Marie, na Hiru Valle Valimar, na Elie Hiruva, na Marie. The biggest takeaway from Tolkien's borrowing of Finnish language to create Kenya is how his creation of a new language is intrinsically tied to the creation of myth. As the author created the language, he needed speakers, and thus a complex history for the speakers as well as a world for them to live in. As Tolkien scholar Verlin Flieger says, Tolkien realized with the story of Kalervo that language, culture, and mythology are inextricably linked. He had invented a language, and so he invented a mythology. Due to Tolkien's Finnish influences, the world has been gifted beautifully composed tragic tales, a new style of fantasy where poems and songs are interlaced with stories, and a completely new language. A new language which necessitated the creation of Middle-earth, the rich and beautiful world readers have come to know and love. However, Tolkien's relationship with Finnish culture is what makes these contributions to his myth-making so incredibly unique. Unlike other influential sources Tolkien used to build up his fantasy world, his knowledge of Finnish came from only one source, the Kalevala. This drastically increased the amount of details from Finnish myth that Tolkien included in his works. Tolkien was not working with an entire mythology, several epics, or even a widely documented history. Instead, he worked with a single book containing some parts of the mythology, some short epic poems, and a few other stories. Therefore, when it came to Finnish culture, Tolkien did not borrow particular motifs or symbols. He borrowed specific stories. This created a vastly different relationship with cultural influences than audiences may have been used to 
and for some readers, may have made Tolkien's work feel closer to home. Tolkien's ability to make his stories recognizable to just about every reader is part of what makes them so unique. And so does his attention to detail, which we see here in the creation of the Elvish language Quenya. Quenya and the other languages woven flawlessly into Tolkien's works make them realistic and believable, allowing the reader to accept Middle-earth's long history due to the lengthy and detailed past of both Elvish and Elvish speakers. It is in these ways that Finnish myth, language, and storytelling had a profound impact on Tolkien, which helped him create the legendarium of Middle-earth into what we know and cherish today. <laughs>